get good. I am the gamer under development and this is Monster Train. We are back for our second week on this game. Today we're going to be taking out a new clan that I've unlocked. This is the Umbra Clan. Commune with the ancient Umbra Shroud. The original residents of Hell mine the Crucible for precious materials to help in the fight against Seraph. We're going to be taking the Hellhorned as our allied clan. That is sort of the base clan. They do have some really nice units for just kind of tanking for your more damaging units. Uh, I have played one run through with the Umbra, which I did not finish. I actually canceled it to start this video. Their mechanic is awesome, but we'll get into that as we hop in. I do think they combine well with the Hellhorn. That's why we're going with that. And here we go. The Hellhorn are generally so well-rounded that everybody kind of combines well with them. Final boss, Seraph the Temperate. The end is near. The incarnation of Hell's greatest foe will temper the strength of your units. Only the truly determined can survive. Pride. Friendly units enter with Sap 3. Sap gives minus 2 attack per stack, decreases every turn. So minus 6 damage the first turn, minus 4 damage the second turn, minus 2 damage the third turn, and then it goes away. So the first three turns against the boss are going to be really, really rough. Random starting cards are Space Prism, which costs 0 and adds 1 capacity to the floor but is consumed. That's actually really good for this particular clan. Fledgling Imp, apply three rage to friendly units. That's not great, honestly. Like, we'll probably either get rid of that or we'll swing really hard into the Imp subtype. And then there's Gem Tro for four. I've never actually seen this one. Apply damage shield one to friendly units. Add three uncommon or rare morsel units into your hand. Wow, that's actually really good, but really, really expensive. So if we can find a way to counterbalance the cost of this card, like if we cost reduce this twice, that'll make a huge difference and this will actually be really, really good. Okay, so we've got 16 cards to start with. Let's go take a look at our champion. We have Penumbra the Glutton, which is Lifesteal 2. Gorge, which is triggered whenever this unit eats a morsel. That's the Umbra mechanic. I'll show you guys, it's really cool. There's essentially these morsel units, and they do a combat, and at the end of the round, if they've survived, they get consumed by another unit and give the other unit that consume them bonuses. So with this unit, whenever it consumes something, it gains plus three attack and plus one health. Has base stats of 20-20, very good. Uh, it is only three capacity as well, which is nice. The Architect version of Penumbra allows for plus two capacity on the floor, which means that with the other things that we've gotten so far, we could get a floor up to like seven capacity, which sounds insane, but it's only really insane because it means you can fit in more morsels, which allows you to consume them. Uh, so I'm not super keen on the Architect one. I feel like taking this a little bit later in the game is a little bit more useful than taking it early. So we're gonna go for Glutton here. Uh, we might take Architect at one of our upgrade points. Okay, so we have the Railhammer grants plus four stacks of armor each time it is applied to a friendly unit, or the Vapor Funnel, which applies dazed enemy units when they enter the Pyre Room, but your Pyre gets minus five attack. Ooh. So this is really, really strong, and this is okay. I think we're gonna go with the Railhammer. The Railhammer will be really useful if we are able to consume morsels that give us armor, because they'll give us additional armor. Uh, so if we go ahead and go for the trial here, this is the Gathered Clergy. Angry Hordes are swarming your train. Thin their numbers before they reach the Pyre. So these guys have Rage, but once their Rage falls off, they're basically useless. We can actually let our Pyre kill these guys for the most part. Uh, and then the main enemy here, the boss, is Chains the Sighted. Add a Weight of Contrition card to the top of your draw pile. That's a card that'll do damage to our Pyre unless we pay one energy to burn it. Not a real big deal here, and then enemy units will enter with armor 10 once again. That's not something we're super worried about with these units. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one, because it just makes sense. I don't think- I still don't think I've reached a point where I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do the trial, ever. Like, it's just more fun to do the trial. So here, we do have to deal with the fact that these guys are gonna hit for about 20, and no matter what we put in front of them, they'll probably kill it. So we have a couple different choices here. We can add a common morsel to our hand, which is nice. We can put out Penumbra. Um, I think what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and put out a Train Steward to eat two of these attacks. Then we'll Shade Splitter here to get a Morsel. Uh, this is the Morsel Jeweler. When it's eaten, the Eater gains one health and damage shield one. It is a 0-2 unit, so it actually won't do any damage on its own. So we're then going to put Penumbra down here. And we will put our Morsel down nowhere because we're out of capacity. I guess maybe Architect would have been more useful than I thought. Uh, okay, well in that case, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put this guy down and we will put the morsel behind him and he'll get to eat the morsel. I <clears throat> I underrated the amount of capacity that we would need with the morsels. But the good news is our guy still survives. He does have lifesteal, so he's going to stay alive for as long as he needs to. 
uh, for the most part. Here he's actually in a little bit of danger if we don't take one of these units out or put something in front of him. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and grab a morsel. Uh, we could put the morsel in front of him, but it's going to die if we do. So instead, what we'll do... Ooh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is a must. We need that extra gold. You never want to let that guy go. Honestly, letting that guy go is a huge, huge loss overall. So we'll go ahead and do this. This guy's probably... Oh, he is going to survive. Because they only have... Why does it say he's only going to go minus six? He doesn't swing... Oh, he has a damage shield. Okay, so yeah, he'll survive. He will survive. That's fine. We don't care about losing these guys that much. We really want to keep Penumbra up for when the boss comes, though. Especially with his lifesteal. His lifesteal is very, very strong. It does wear off, though, so... It's only going to help him sort of last till we get to the boss, but he is a 2020 unit. A brief respite. That means the boss should be coming next after this. So let's go ahead and start by space prisming this floor, giving us one more capacity. Uh, we don't really need to mess with these guys too much. The pyre will probably kill them. Yeah, the pyre will kill them as soon as they get there. I don't really care if they hit the pyre one time. It's not the end of the world. It will affect how much money we get as a reward and our score, but that's not the most important thing. This is quite nice, though. Eater gains plus two attack and additionally gains another lifesteal. And then we can put these guys down and give him rage, which is also really nice. Uh, we could actually give this guy rage as well if we wanted to. But I don't know what value that'll actually add in here, really. Because he's going to die before he gets to swing anyway. Uh, apply rage three to friendly units. Now, for whatever reason, there we go. That's what I wanted. I wanted to put him in front of our... Penumbra here so that we can basically have him take the first boss hit for Penumbra and that way Penumbra doesn't just get whacked for no reason. Uh, in this case there's really nothing we can do with this so we'll just cast it on something it doesn't really matter. And if the boss comes down there next we won't have to deal with our thing being hit by another group of these. That first group will get wiped out, these guys will go up and then the boss should spawn here. Yeah. So if we kill the boss on this floor, we don't have to deal with them actually making it to the pyre, and that is going to be our goal. Space Prism here again is going to give us another capacity. Uh, we do have Gem Trove, but we do not have the energy to play it. That's actually kind of annoying that you get it without having the energy to play it. Uh, we can add another Morsel, though. Oh, that's nice. So this Morsel is going to give us another energy when it gets eaten. We have another Morsel here. We're going to go ahead and play that. Get another energy when it's eaten. I probably should have put them in front of Penumbra just so they could essentially tank for him, but I didn't think about it, so that's my own fault. Uh, we could put this guy here, but in that case... Oh, he will actually survive and he'll kill one of these guys. So it's something. It's not anything huge, but it's something. Okay. He's going to kill one of these guys. Or not. He's just going to damage them. The main thing here is that Penumbra needs to survive to lifesteal. Why did he not lifesteal there? He should have lifestealed on that attack. Oh, he, I guess he's out of lifesteal. It lasted for one round. That's right. Okay. Well, it's all good. Penumbra is going to die here. We're not actually going to kill this guy on this floor, but he's so close to death that we'll kill him the next time. We're still going to lose a few more health on our pyre here, but it's not the end of the world. Letting your pyre tank isn't a terrible thing. It does cost you score, like I said, but score is not the, the most irreplaceable thing in existence. Uh, this is problematic. How we ended up not getting a single unit is beyond me, but we're essentially going to have to give up this second floor now. There's really nothing we can do about it. I probably should have put that train steward on floor two, actually. that That's probably what I should have done. But it's okay. You live and you learn. We're still going to wreck that guy when he gets up here, uh, especially with this guy giving damage shield. Yeah. Yeah, we should be able to kill this guy by the time he gets up here very easily. Okay, so maybe not the most stellar starting round. Wow, no units. No units at all. I mean, we got a couple morsels, but other than that, no real units at all. Uh, let's grab a morsel here and see which one we get. Do another morsel, maybe. If we do another morsel, though, we're taking pyre damage off of this, and we're also losing out on our torch right here, which is going to contribute damage. Actually, the torch is going to make it enough for him to die, so we'll do that. Pyre took a little bit of damage because we didn't cast that spell, which is fine. And dead. Beautiful. Okay, so not the best first round for sure, but we did get the unit draft. We lost 9 damage taken, so we lost 18% off of our score. Score is 
important, but it's not the most important thing. Like, I'm not super worried about the score. I just want to make it to the end at this point. Uh, especially with Umbra being a new clan for me. So I really like this one. You deal three damage, and if you actually kill the unit, then you get two uncommon or rare morsels. This one, you can sacrifice a unit to get three random uncommon or rare morsels in your hand, which is also really good. Or we could get another space prism, which is never a bad card to have. Uh, all of these are very good cards to select from. I do feel like the Antumbra Assault is actually better, though, since it does allow you to targetly kill something and get morsels. That's what we call a two-for-one in the card game biz. Uh, okay, so Hidden Passage is not great. Vent is all right, and Ritual of Battle is terrible. I'm going to go for Vent. Unit Draft. So we have the Crucible Warden here that gets damage shield one every time it gorges, which is really, really good. Uh, we have the Morsel Maker, which summons two Morsels every turn at the end of the round, which he then consumes to gain three attack power and three health. This guy's really, really good, and he only takes up one capacity, which makes him even better. Um, and then we have the Demon Fiend here, which is just a big, beefy boy that takes up a lot of capacity and costs more than we can actually pay to cast him. So I think that's a really easy choice for us. Actually, it is kind of tough between the Crucible Warden and the Morsel Maker, because every turn you feed him, he gets a damage shield, which makes him a solid tank. But the Morsel Maker is something that just gets stronger and stronger over time and is basically functional all on its own on a level. So I'm going to take him. Uh, now we need to definitely see if one has Pyre Health. They do not. So we can go for more coins and Merchant of Magic, which would allow us to upgrade our spells a little bit. Now that wouldn't be bad because we do need to upgrade Gem Trove or it's functionally useless. Or we could go for Merchant of Steel and get another Umber unit. Ooh, that's tough. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna take the extra money, and then go here, and that's because hopefully we can actually get something really nice out of this. Uh, so this one, upgrade a spell to remove consume and cost plus one more, is actually decent. We could put that on a space prism. Okay, so this is, this is me doing exactly what I didn't say I was gonna do. So we could put one less cost on this space prism and make it zero, non-consuming, just get an extra capacity on floor, which would be really, really strong here. Unfortunately, we do need Gem Trove to go down one, or it's basically unplayable, so we're gonna do that. Upgrade a spell with 10 magic power. This is actually perfect for Antumbra Assault, mainly because that 13 damage will almost guaranteedly kill most units that you want to pick off with this type of spell, and give you two morsels in hand, which is great. We can reroll here and hope for another minus one cost. Beautiful, and we're gonna put that on the space prism to take it down to zero. This does mean that anytime we play our three costs, we're basically committing to just playing the three costs that turn, but it's honestly not the worst thing. Uh, here we could take the Antumbra Assault up to 23, or we could wait and reduce its cost to zero. I'm not sure which of those I feel better about. Uh, this is 2x plus 10. So this is actually even better, because it will guaranteedly do 10 damage to all units. I like that. We'll do that. Um, and then we are out of money, so yeah, we're done. We're done here. We have done all the things. Let's go to the next fight. Hopefully this one we don't get hit as many times straight up on our crystal. Penitent Prayers. The Reconcilers have arrived in great force to make sure that you repent for the sins that hell has brought upon the world. Uh, so we have a Reconciler, which adds a Sinner's Burden card to the top of our draw pile. That is another one where we pay one or we basically take damage on our Pyre... Pyre. Purge and Pyre, guys. I got mixed up for a minute. Uh, and then we also have the Forged Disciple, which is just a ton of health and two attack. That's not really a big deal. Um, this isn't honestly a really big deal. It only has two health anyway. This guy's a problem. The Steel Slate has Relentless, Spikes 2, and 200 health. He kills us just by existing. And he exists for a long time because he has a lot of health. Non-boss enemy units enter with Spikes 3. How big of a problem is Spikes 3 for us? Considering that these guys can spawn in groups of like three to four, that's nine damage just for attacking them, so you're probably going to lose units just by swinging into them. That is kind of rough. Then again, we have Railhammer, and it is another 75. Who am I kidding? Who am I kidding? We're just going to do the trial anyway. It was probably a mistake. Spikes is honestly the worst effect for trials, in my opinion. Like, it legitimately makes everything harder. Uh, okay. So here we have a couple different choices. They're not bad. We're gonna off this guy right off the bat, I think. Yup, finito. Uh, so the Morsel Maker is interesting because we could put it on floor two and just let it start building up and it would become an absolute house on floor two. Or we could do something a little bit different. We could put Penumbra down, put the Morsel Maker behind Penumbra, 
and gain the advantage of his gorge every single turn, which is what we're going to do, because that's awesome. Okay. So that's fine. We're going to take a little bit of damage there from Spikes. Not really worried about it because of the lifesteal. Uh, and now we're going to consume these morsels at the end of the next round, and our Penumbra is going to get ridiculously strong, ridiculously fast. Now the other question here is if we Shade Splitter, we get another morsel. What do we want to do with that morsel? Well, for one thing, we already know we want to do this. The question is, do we want to do that for zero and kill him with that? Or do we want to use our zero spell to damage all these guys? I think we want to use our zero spell to damage all these guys. So instead, what we'll do is we'll kill him with this. Uh, we still have two energy left, so to speak. So I'm going to go ahead and expand the capacity. If I do expand the capacity down here, though, we're not actually going to gain much because we're already over capacity. These morsels have the ability to take us over cap. Now, we can't play anything when we're over cap, but they can take us over cap. So throwing this down here doesn't really help. At least not at this particular moment. So instead, I'm going to throw this down right here. We don't need to put the rubble morsel here because he'll just basically die and we'll get nothing for it. Now, if we put him up here, we could potentially put another unit in front of him next turn. Uh, and then I think we'll do that for two damage there. And then we'll just vent here. And vent should just basically kill that back unit and weaken the front unit. And we should be good. And you can see Penumbra is actually going to come up for life because of his lifesteal. And then he's going to get his gorge effect, which is awesome. Here we go. It's going to start building up now, guys. Oh, that thing killed itself instead of getting eaten. We still got one gorge effect there, though. All right. Brief respite. That means that we're probably going to be dealing with the boss relatively soon. Uh, so we have Antumbra Assault here, which is actually kind of perfect for the situation that we're in. Hmm. This is much more interesting at this particular moment. Because we can make some more morsels, we can do Gem Trove to get a damage shield on a friendly unit. Uh, I feel like Gem Troving here isn't necessarily that useful, but if we can take this down just five more health, then we can kill it with Antumbral Assault. I just don't know how we can actually do that at this point. Hmm. That's really tough. I guess... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got this, guys. Here we go. That'll do it right there. Okay. So we're not going to kill him with Antumbra Assault. Or un her, I guess. With Antumbra Assault. What we're going to do is we're going to weaken her enough that she can be finished off, though. So that's good enough for me. We won't get our morsels for that, but that's okay. And then here we can just go ahead and Shade Splitter with our other energy. And sure, we'll put that down back here just so that we can get a little more energy back. Uh, I believe that will actually work. We should still get our energy back there. Oh, no, we won't, because there was nothing to eat him. Okay, well, we did get to gorge twice on Penumbra here, which is great. Uh, we do need to deal with that unit that's up top, or not. If we can actually kill this this boss in this round, then we don't have to worry about that unit up top. So what we want to do here is make sure that we can kill the boss this round. Right now, we're doing 140 to the boss. We're not killing it, though. And it doesn't look like there's a whole lot we can do to kill it. Like, we could do that, but that's not actually going to help much. I probably shouldn't have done that now that I think about it, to be honest. Uh, here, though, we can put both of these guys down, and that will actually help us to kill that. And then we can do... Oh, no, we can't because we don't have capacity here. Well, what we can do is we can put these down on this road, just so that if we need to next turn, we have something to body block. And we could potentially put a unit in front of it. We're going to get him almost to dead right here, which is good enough for me at this point. Okay. So far, we haven't taken any more damage to our Pyre, though, which is good. Ugh, those spikes, guys. The spikes are so strong. The spikes are a huge, huge problem. Like I said, they're, in my opinion, the spikes are one of the worst trial effects you can get. Because it just means more damage, even though you're not, like, you know, it's more damage just to play the game. Because you have to kill units. I guess you could use spells. If you're playing with the, uh, I can't remember their name, the blue clan that has all the, the spell damage, spikes aren't as bad, I guess. But for everybody else, spikes are really rough. Uh, Sinner's Burden here. Oh, that actually doesn't do damage to our Pyre. It just takes up a spot in our hand, which isn't that big of a deal. Uh, we can go ahead and Space Prism if we want to. Question is, do we want to do that here or here? Let's do this. Let's Shade Splitter first. Let's torch this character. And then here we've got... What? How much capacity? Plenty of capacity. Yeah, so we don't really need to... Oh, and this is nice. That's it right there, I think. 
It's close, but it's not it. How that's not it is beyond me, but it's very close. I'm gonna go ahead and do this here, and then we could Sinner's Burden if we wanted to, just because. Okay. So we're gonna get really close to killing him here, but we're probably not gonna kill him, and that's mainly because of spikes. Spikes are just so strong. He's dead here, though, so at least we're not taking damage on the pyre. I mean, we kill him before the pyre with that. Seems good. Okay. So no negative penalties, and we do get our bonuses for the trial, which is that extra 75 coins. That's gonna help us out, because we kind of spent out a lot early on. Uh, Mine Collapse deals 3x damage, and an enemy unit gains Slay 2. Or Slay gain 2 energy. Oh, wow, that's actually really good, because if you can basically... If you can deal 6 to it and kill it, you get this for free. And you can cast other things. The other option is Antumbra Assault, which we like for obvious reasons. It's 2 for 1-ing. Uh, this has actually got a, a pretty good potential to 2 for 1 as well, though. I think I'm going to take that. Sacrifice an Imp, deal 50 damage to the front enemy unit. I like this a lot. I'm going to go with this. Uh, we do have, what, 2 Imps right now, so we may look to get more Imps in the future. We have taken damage, so we could go for the Pyre Remains here, but that would give us another Merchant of Magic, which I don't know is the best option for us right now. I mean, if we look around... What do we really have to gain from another Merchant of Magic? Uh, actually, putting more damage on that would be really good. Yeah, I'm not opposed to a Merchant of Magic. I'm not opposed to a Merchant of Magic. We're only gonna get nine Pyre Health back though, which makes this feel like a waste. I think I'll go here. And we'll get our Umbra unit before we do our, up our unit upgrades so we can make sure that we have like the proper units. When this unit eats a Morsel unit plus two attack permanently, You guys get what that means, right? I, I didn't understand what that meant at first, but I understand now. We're going with this for sure. Oh my gosh. That's that's insane, guys. When this unit dies, return it to the top of the draw pile. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Every time this unit gorges, it gains two attack for the rest of the run. Permanently means the rest of the run, I'm assuming. And if we give it Endless, when this dies, it just goes to the top of the deck so we can just play it again. If we put it in front of the Morsel Maker, guys, holy crap, this is gonna be so good. Uh, upgrade a unit with 5 attack and 10 health, yes please. Um, yeah, I think we're just gonna, we're gonna go all in on that guy. Oh, we can't, he's maxed out now, sad times. Uh, we can give 10 attack to the Morsel Maker though, which is actually really nice. I go for that because then he doesn't just sit there and do things. Uh, we can purge a card here as well, which isn't a bad idea. We should kind of cut out anything we don't find ourselves playing that much. I'm honestly tempted to cut out Gem Trove, but I think I'll keep it for now. If we had to cut out one card, I would probably cut one of the torches. That may seem like a bad idea, but the reality is we have the Antumbra thing, and cutting down cards in our deck just gives us a better chance to cycle through our spells faster, which is really good. Okay, let's see what we get. The Whirling Pit tears apart everything around it, sucking in anything that gets too close. Do you throw something in? Purge a card, gain a card. Ooh, I like that. Um, let's throw in another torch. Torches are really good, though, and I feel like it's not necessarily wise to toss two of those. No, it'll be okay. I mean, we could toss a Train Steward as well. The problem with tossing a Train Steward is that I want to make sure we have two really strong floors first. And right now, I feel like we have one really strong floor, but not two. Eh, we'll toss it. We'll toss it. What do we get? As if satisfied by your offering, the Chaos Portal reverses its pull, spewing out debris from all over Hell. Through the mesh, you can clearly see the realms of both the Umbra and the Hellhorn. A brief opening allows you to reach for one. I'm actually going to go for a Hellhorn card here, and that's because the Hellhorn typically have really good tanks to go with Penumbra. That was not what I wanted. It's not terrible, though. I'll take it. It's not what I wanted, but it's not, not great. You reach through the portal to the Scorched Plains, closing your hand around something solid and pull it back through. You turn to leave and the Chaos Portal closes as, quick, as quickly as it appeared. I would have much rather gotten one of the units that starts out with like 25 armor. That's what I was hoping for. Would really, really like those units. Okay. Uh, wow. Constructed explosives explode twice. That's not good. Daedalus, Heaven's Disgrace Professor has improved his explosive inventions, creating better protections through technological enhancements. 
Uh, so basically, this guy's gonna fly to the three rows. He's gonna spawn a bomb that now explodes twice. That's ridiculous. The fact that the bomb explodes twice is absolutely nuts. Like, that shouldn't even be a thing. Okay. So we have to make some very tough decisions here about how we're going to deal with this. Because we want to put our Overgorger right here, but if we do, it's going to take 20 damage right off the bat, and that's not good. Like, that's really not good. However, we can kill it with Mind Collapse. Yeah, oh wow, we can actually come up an energy if we kill it with Mind Collapse. Okay, okay, I got this, guys, I got this. Here's how we're going to do it. Uh, we need to have exactly one energy left when we do it. So what we'll do is we'll put Penumbra down here. And we'll put... Can I just get to the second row, please? We'll put Overgorger right here. And then we will use Mind Collapse on this guy. Killing him, getting two energy back. Put a Train Steward here to protect Penumbra. And then we will go with... Probably this. Like that? Yeah, th no, he'll still die. He'll still die. Here we won't die. We'll actually get to keep the armor and the rage. Seems good. Let's go. Oh, and we got a nice little bite on the boss there, too. I really like the this round is actually one of my favorite because you can wear the boss down over time, which is actually a really powerful mechanic. Okay. That's not good. We really got to kill that thing. Uh, fortunately, it looks like we're in a good position to do it. Oh, we're in a great position to do it, actually. Wow. Uh, this could get better, but, I mean, it really can't get worse for them. That's that's the sad truth. Uh, we could go ahead and Space Prism again on either one of these rows. I think I'm going to do it on this row. Uh, and then we'll take out one of these guys just to reduce damage on this row, and we'll vent here for 10 damage, killing the entire row. That was nice. I'm happy with that. And now he's gonna gorge twice this round. Permanent damage increases. Here we come, guys. Oh my gosh. That's insane. I'm super excited for how strong that card's gonna get over the course of this run. I'm not even kidding. That thing's gonna be nuts. Uh, Antumbra Assault here is perfect. Kill that. We get two morsels. I love it. Uh, we can go ahead and put a Fledgling Imp in front of Penumbra here to protect him from at least one of those hits. And then we can go with... Now, the morsels are where it gets interesting, right? We only have room to play them down here, so I guess it's not that interesting. We'll just play them here, and we'll do a Shade Splitter to pick up another morsel, which we'll put down here. Lovely. That's lovely. Oh, yeah. This is great. Are you guys ready? This is going to be incredible. Get him, boy. Okay, so now he's going to Nom Nom them, gain a permanent two attack increase over the course of this run. That should add up a lot. Oh, and now Penumbra's Nom Nom in too. Getting his pluses. Uh, so we do have this guy kind of loose right here, which is a problem. We will want to make a point of killing him. Not worried about the bomb on that floor anymore, though, so that's good. Dead. Um, okay. Couple different options here. Really, using Impressive and the Fledgling Imp here seems like a decent option. The problem is, though, like, he's almost better off just absorbing a hit. Because the 50 damage is wasted there. We're better off, honestly, just kind of saving it, and I think that's what we'll do. Uh, here, we, we're not really worried about anything. Anyway, that's fine. Congratulations, you exploded into nothing. Nom, 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 nom. Get him. Get him, Overgorger. Do your thing. Nom some more, buddy. Nom some more. If we can keep him on the board, like, he's just super, super strong. Okay, that's a problem. That is a lot of people headed to our engine room right now. Uh, Vent will deal with it, though. Actually, I think Vent will kill all of them except for her, which we can finish with the Antumbra Assault. Okay, Vent it is. I just vented for all of our energy because I'm bad at life. If I had played Antumbra Assault first, that would have been fine. I'm so bad, guys. I'm so bad. I got so excited because I was like, we have an answer, and then that happened. But, I mean, we are still at least beating down Daedalus a little bit here. We are still gorging this guy, so that's nice. Uh, we're gonna kill- oh, no, we're not gonna kill her. She's gonna survive just barely. So they get one hit on the pyre this time. I'm not happy about that, but- oh, they stealthed past. Okay. 
So that's problematic in a couple of different ways. Uh, let's try doing some interesting things here. I'm gonna get a morsel here. Is he... Well, he's dead this round no matter what. Which is fine. Uh, what can we do here that's actually gonna be useful? Kill. Get some extra energy. Nail him. Uh, we don't have an imp to sacrifice for that. Does it still work? No, we don't have... We have to target the imp we're sacrificing first. I was hoping. You can't blame me for hoping, guys. I mean, either way, the gorger here is probably gonna do the job. We do have to worry about his health, but if we get lucky, we'll draw something to kind of protect him a little bit. And then his health will not be an issue. Uh, we'll get Gem Trove to protect him for at least one round. Hmm. It's actually kind of tough. So, oh, that's to all friendly units? Wow, that's strong. That is extremely strong right there. Uh, I guess we'll just untumbra here. Hmm, what do we do with these guys? We could put them all down up here. But if we do that, we're only leaving ourselves room for a two-cost unit. Although I think there's only, what, two-cost units left in the deck? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So, we'll do... This? He's gonna die the first round. That makes me super... Well, no, he won't. He'll get his damage protection, so that's okay. Oh, and he'll get health back, so he'll get another round out of it, too. But, I mean, we saw the damage calculation. We're definitely not killing Daedalus this round. Oof. Oof, oof, oof. Daedalus makes it to the third and final floor. But we get the Overgorger back, and I'm dumb and made it so we can't actually play him. Unless... I get silly that I have to do it this way, but I'll do what I have to do. Uh, okay, so that is... He's dead. We just killed him. Beautiful. Because he kept all that damage, oh my gosh. Overgorger is so good. <laughs> very nice, guys. Very nice. Uh, we do get the choice of some new spells. So kill a morsel unit triggering eaten and gorged abilities as if it had been eaten 2x times. We could use this to, like, spam power our Overgorger. The other option here is just to go for some of these... Like, both of these spells to me are kind of junk anyway. Uh, this one actually seems really good. I'm gonna take that. Oh, and there we go. That's the guy I wanted. I wanted the Rail Beater that starts with armor. Mainly because he can basically frontline for Penumbra really, really well. Um, this is actually tough. I guess we want one more energy, because the capacity doesn't matter that much. We have a lot of capacity boosting stuff. I'll take the one more energy. I think that's going to be the best thing for us. Uh, Alright, so our Pyre has taken not too much damage. We could go here, get 20 health back, but that's honestly a waste. Uh, we would get money and a hell vent that way, though. Over here, though, we're going to get an artifact, a new unit, and an unstable vortex. I like that better. Friendly units enter with lifesteal 2. Your pyre gets plus 15 attack. Uh, this actually seems better. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go for that. That seems better to me. Hellhorn banner. Cost minus 3 per imp unit in play. Uh, if you go for, like, just an imp build, that's gotta be really good, but we don't have that, so I'm gonna take the rail beater instead, because he's just awesome. Uh, now we have two of those rail beaters, which is great. Just great. Look at that. They take two capacity, though. So along with Penumbra, they will fill a floor on their own. And then we have the Vortex, where we can remove up to two cards. I'm starting to feel like this is actually kind of bad in our deck, and that's mainly because if the Imp's already gone by the time we get it, it's useless. Um, I'm going to actually drop that, I think. It has a lot of damage when it hits, though. When it hits. When it hits doesn't feel good for me to say, even. I'm gonna get rid of that one. And I'll probably cut... Not a train steward, because we found ourselves light on units the other the other game. Uh, I'll actually cut one of these guys, because they really don't do anything. Like, they don't affect the board. They just give you morsels. They don't affect the board. And we have plenty of other cards to generate morsels. Uh, so here we can go Glutton 2, which gives us even better gorge effects. 
or we can go for Architect, which will give us plus two capacity on the floor that he summoned on and an additional five attack. I actually think this is going to be better. Yeah, I'm going to go with this. The extra capacity, especially now that we have the Rail Beater to tank for him, makes a lot of sense. Clipped Infiltration. These clipped have enlisted conduits to help them ascend your train more quickly. Remove the conduit and the clipped will become more vulnerable. Uh, if these are the conduits, yeah, they grant haste. Haste is a problem. It moves them straight past floor two and into floor three. Uh, so we'll take that into account when we place our floors. Clip Guardian has 95 health, 5 attack. That's just a tough unit to kill. And then the Porcupine is relentless, has 500 health and 12, 12 attack. Wow. Seal of Aggression. Non-boss enemy units get multi-strikes. So that would let this hit for 10 and this hit for 2. That's a problem. That's not. And we get an artifact for it. I think it's worth. Oh my god. Okay, non-boss units. I was going to say, if the boss got doubled, that would have been a huge mistake. Oh no, he hits for two times zero. Uh, we didn't actually see the Quill Marksmen. Like, it didn't show them, so I didn't know they were going to be a part of this equation. That's actually a little bit more problematic, in my opinion. So we'll do this just to gain a little capacity on the floor. Uh, we have 12, 14 damage incoming. So we could frontline Penumbra here and put Morsel Maker in the back. That's not a bad combination, but it does mean giving up the combination of Morsel Maker and Overgorger. So I don't know that I like that. I think instead what I'd rather do is put Morsel Maker right here and save him for when Overgorger comes up and then put Penumbra here and maybe a Fledgling Imp right here. I don't know that we even need to play the Train Steward right now. I feel like playing the Train Steward right now is maybe a mistake. Uh, he won't eat enough damage to survive anyway. And with this character down, we're going to essentially eat 12 damage. Oh no, we'll only eat 6, so we'll get another, what, 8 onto Penumbra? Okay, well I guess that makes it easier. I played these in the wrong order. But we can completely protect Penumbra by putting a Train Steward here, so we're going to do that. Honestly, we know we can lose the Train Steward now, and it's not the end of the world. And these guys will get eaten by the uh, Morsel Maker as well, so the Morsel Maker himself will get stronger. We really need a Rail Beater to deal with uh, setups like that where they have a big tank guy in front. Okay, so... Provided we use Mind Collapse correctly here, this is going to be fine. So it's 12 damage right now, and we would get two energy back. If this guy reaches the pyre room, it doesn't actually matter. If this guy reaches the pyre room, it's also not that big of a deal. Uh, so we might want to use one just to kill this. Okay, now the damage that gets to the pyre room is basically irrelevant. We're going to take two there. Uh, we know we can use Mind Collapse for zero to kill this and get two energy back, so that's not a bad call. I'm going to put our Rail Beater down right here. This is going to allow us to swap these rows, which will allow us to make sure that we kill the weaker units when there's a bigger, tankier unit in front. In the meantime, though, he is going to be taking quite a bit of damage here. Uh, nothing we can do is really going to reduce that too much. So there's no point in really sweating over reducing it. Up here, we could use a Space Prism. I think that's not a bad choice. And then... How do we want to use this? I mean, honestly, we're not going to lose any units here no matter what we do. We could even put the Train Steward here to kill this instead. But that wouldn't serve very much. Actually, no, that makes sense. Watch this. We'll kill the Train Steward, or we'll kill the Collector with this Train Steward. And then we'll use the Mind Collapse on this guy. Now our Pyre is going to take zero damage. We got two energy back that we're not going to use. That's okay. That's okay. If the end result is no damage to our Pyre and us getting the extra coins, I'm fine. There we go, extra 75, beautiful. Rail Beater's gonna swap them around and then Penumbra's gonna eat the weak guy. So now that unit doesn't get to jump straight to the third floor either. Has to fight our Train Steward there. The Train Steward obviously isn't a huge threat, but it is some more damage going to that unit. And now here we go, guys. Here it is, Overgorger time. Oh man, the Overgorger just makes me happy. Just legitimately makes me happy. I see the Overgorger and I'm like, that's what it's about, folks. That's what it's about. 
the pain train is pulling into the station. So here we could put another rail beater down and still have room to do like a fledgling imp. Which isn't a bad idea, especially since the fledgling imp can just eat damage here for us. Uh, the other option though is we could Antumbra Assault, which would give us a morsel to put down somewhere. Uh, we could also go ahead and do this. I don't know that that's a terrible plan, uh, but I do feel like maybe we just do this. Let's just do this. That seems good. Um, and then we get a... Ooh, ooh, ooh. We have the capacity there. We do not. I was going to say, if we could put a damage shield up there, that'd be great. Uh, here we'll put a damage shield on the frontline unit right there. Oh, I didn't think about that. So since Penumbra is not the front unit, I don't think this is eaten by the front non-morsel unit after the next round of combat. Okay, so yeah, basically because we put Penumbra behind these rail beaters, he's not actually going to gorge anymore, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, okay. Keep on gorging, Overgorger. You do your overgorging. I'm still not opposed to this, too, because the Rail Beater will probably die soon enough, like, honestly. And having them tank for our Penumbra is still a decent play. Uh, I do think it was a mistake not to put the Penumbra at the front, though. Like, now that I understand why that... Basically, I'm learning, guys. I'm learning. I made a mistake. It happens. Kill a Morsel unit, trigger Eaten and Gorge abilities as if it had been eaten two times. So eight times right now we would be able to gorge the uh, Overgorger if we did that. I I feel like that's a really, really strong play, guys. I really think that, like, it is an acceptably strong play at this point to just throw everything into that. I think I'm just going to do it. Uh, and for the Eaten effect that we want, this one will give three health. This one will give three attack. I'm going to do the one that gives health. Oh my gosh. Look at that, guys. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's so good. Uh, and while we're at it, we'll do this just to kill that backline unit. Oh my gosh. That was so good, though. Get wrecked. So very good. Uh, unfortunately, that unit is going to make it to our pyre, though. It's going to make it to our pyre. It's going to get a hit in. Uh, I probably could have prevented that if I wasn't so enamored with that, but honestly, one hit to our pyre is worth eight more stacks of permanent damage on the Overgorger. To me, like, that, that is a worthwhile exchange rate. Um, yeah, he's gonna insta-kill this guy now, so that's great. I think on this turn, our best bet is actually just to go ahead and use Spike of the Hellhorn on... Well, maybe not, because the rage, the rage will fall off, the armor won't. Yeah, I guess we could use this on Penumbra, just to increase our damage over the next few turns. I don't think that's bad, because the boss is probably coming pretty quickly here. Oh my gosh, guys. Overgorger is in the house. Look at that. Just so much damage. So much, so much damage. Yeah, I figured that. The boss is here now. Uh, so definitely not a bad idea to get the Rage and Armor onto Penumbra there. Now, the real question is, what else can we do this round that's going to benefit us quite a bit? Um, that's tough. This is a problem, like, he's going to prevent us from hitting that, so if we could kill him, that would be the ideal situation. Unfortunately, I don't think that any way we slice it, we're going to have enough damage for- actually... 16 is enough, so we can spend one energy and still have enough to vent here and kill all these guys. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I got this. I got this, guys. Watch this. Boom. Everybody gets rage. And then we come up here. We vent for 16. Kills the frontline guy. This will die now, too. Uh, and then we come down here. We mind collapse this. Oh, I thought I had put a damage upgrade on this. So the fact that we can't mind collapse, that means we're not actually going to get that bonus that I had hoped for. But it is what it is. <laughs> we'll hit it for zero. I'm fine with it. Uh, this is still going to be just fine. We're going to do 366 damage to the Porcupine before he gets to move up. So he'll be more than half dead. And then he'll have to fight the Overgorger. Which is just not... You know, you're not winning that fight. You're really just not winning that fight. 
Oh, and we'll wreck that backline unit so he won't have any support either. Very nice. Very nice. Come on, Penumbra. Do your Penumbra best. Drag him down into the muck. Oh my gosh. So he'll get through this second floor without any any opposition, and that's because we built around the third floor knowing that they would probably stealth skip. Uh, that's not a big deal, honestly. Add another space. Gem Trove here to give him a damage shield seems really good. Oh, to give all of them a damage shield, excuse me. And then we have a bunch of morsels that we can lay down as well. How about another damage shield? <laughs> This is just too good, guys. Just too good. Do either of these have damage? They actually do. So we can put him down to get free damage. Uh, and then we'll Antumber Assault for a little bit extra damage, and we'll put him down as well. I guess I should have put the, the zero attack guy in front so we would actually get that extra two damage, but it's whatever. I mean, honestly, we, we knew we were giving him the middle floor. It doesn't change the fact that he's going to get absolutely wrecked by Overgorger. Like, Overgorger is going to eat his soul. It's kind of remarkable, honestly. Like, it makes me super happy that Overgorger is so OP. Uh, okay. Yeah, sure. Put him there, too. Um, yeah. Do that. That works. Get wrecked. Overgorger gonna eat him. Oh. Oh, he's so strong, guys. He's so strong. I can't wait. So we're gonna look at Overgorger after this round, because I want to see how much power he has. And we got the advanced prototype. I don't know what that does, but we'll find out in a second. Train Steward units gain Damage Shield 2 and Multi-Strike 1. Lovely. I love that. Thank you. Uh, Crucible Extension, plus 1 capacity on this floor. This is just a bad way for us to get capacity. Deal 20 damage to a random enemy unit 4 times. Gain 2 energy if it slays. That's really good. Feast, Trigger Feeding on Morsel units. That's also kind of good if we're just going all in on the uh, Pump Up Overgorger strategy. Let's see what Overgorger looks like right now. Guys, guys, 69 damage. Overgorger will eat you up. <laughs> uh, so let's see. I'm really fond of this right now. I, I do really like this, but I feel like this right here is just gonna make Overgorger ridiculous. It does put a lot on one card though, and that can be problematic as well. So I think we'll go with that. Tiresome Climb, Ascend a Unit, and Apply Daze too. Uh, that's not terrible. You can kind of use this to send things into your Pyre Room to get killed by the Pyre. This is also not terrible. This is actually really good. I'm going to go for that. Sack and Imp, draw two. Or gain two energy draw card. That's really good. Okay, so this seems really easy here. We could use a little bit of Pyre Health, and we get to double a card. So we're going to go ahead and take the Pyre Health. We're going to take an Artifact here. Apply Days 3 to enemy units that are moved between floors outside of the Ascension phase. Because of Cole's 50% chance to apply Days when an enemy unit enters your train. Heck yes. Heck yes. Okay. So now we get to duplicate any card in our deck. I wonder what card I'm going to duplicate. <laughs> Malicious laughter. Uh, aggressive amulet. Non-boss units get plus 6 attack. That would give these units 13 attack, which is a lot. Uh, him, 11. Eh, it's not terrible. I mean, it really comes down to how quickly we can kill them. We can kill these really efficiently. These guys, not so much. But it is an extra 150 coins, so who am I kidding? We're going to go for it. And it is only non-boss units, so we won't have to deal with that when we get to the Crystal Cloak, who has stealth 8. So basically, the first eight turns, it doesn't take damage. Wow, what is that BS? That is absolutely ridiculous, guys. Fortunately, we have something more ridiculous. Overgorger. Uh, this will actually be really funny if we draw vents. We didn't get vents, though, so sadly, that's, that's not going to do what I wanted it to do. However, they only have one unit that's not stunned, so we can still kill their entire group just by doing this. Uh, and this time we'll actually put Railbeater behind Penumbra for the moment. And that's mainly because we do want Penumbra to be in the front so he can gorge on things. Uh, and we could honestly put our Train Steward... We'll put it on the, on the third floor. That way he'll catch anybody that gets by with stealth. 
Seems good. Beat them down, boys. Oh, they're stealth. We didn't get to hit them. That's so obnoxious. Okay. That's obnoxious. No steam vents here either. That's actually really unfortunate. Alright. So now things are going to get kind of hairy. We play that, we're going to have two left. Oof. Oof, 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 oof. Wait, 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 wait. This is fine. This is absolutely fine. Uh, here. And then here. I like it a lot. And then there. Okay. Looks good. Looks good. <laughs> uh, we really want that train steward to die, though. Like, he has to die so that we can put down our overgorgers there when we get them. But that's okay. I'm sure he'll die before the overgorger gets there, to be honest. That stealth effect is super obnoxious, though. Oh, no. Here we go. Okay, so what we need to do here... If we increase our capacity. That doesn't help us that much. Uh, here, this is ridiculous, but we will use all of our mana for that, and we want to use that at zero mana. Oof, that's that's rough. I really wish we could just kill this guy off now. Hmm. He's only going to take three this turn. So I guess we'll put one Overgorger up here, just because that way we get one on the table. Um, and then for this, we're just going to kind of have to wait till we redraw him. Or, this is nuts. I can't even believe this is a thing, but okay. Okay. I'll buy into it if, if that's what it takes. Do we do this? Or this? I mean, honestly, the Overgorger is a house all of his own volition, so... Yeah, I'm okay with that. I really need another Morsel Maker, actually, now that I think about it. That Morsel Maker is going to be super, super key in the future. Uh, and we do have one of these big guys up top here who's on his way through, which is a problem. Like, this guy is going to be able to hit for quite a time. He's going to take about 79 damage here, so he's almost dead. He's just not dead yet. Uh, and this guy will not die at all, which is problematic, because I really want him to. Hmm. What do we do? What do we do? Well, we don't play units, because we can't. Uh, I guess that makes things a lot easier in some regard, though, because we can just gem trove here. Get a bunch of morsels that we're not going to be able to use. Dead? Seems good. This guy is going to get killed here before he even makes it to the next row. I'm okay with that. Uh, this is the biggest problem. This guy's gonna get through, but he'll only get through for one hit on the pyre. It's crazy that this little tank, uh, train steward, tank steward, train steward is actually gonna get buffed, like, through the roof here. Yeah, both of them die. They get one hit on the pyre. It's not the end of the world. A brief respite. Now we draw this. This would have been good last turn, but now we get it. Um, okay. So problems being problems, what do we do here? It's really tough. I feel like Space Prism here isn't a bad idea. We just throw this guy down there. Oh, we can. We should have room. Yeah, we can. Okay, there we go. Uh, we could do that, or we could go for a Shade Splitter and see if we get a... That's better. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, sure. Now that I think about it, actually, the rage would have been better. However, with the rage, if the imp dies, like, he'll get attacked next round and die. Okay, so now I kind of wish I'd done the imp. But we could draw another imp here, which would be really, really good. Okay, so. That's really strong, and that would leave us with exactly one mana to play with. 
uh, as well as morsel, morsel, morsels. So with that one mana we have left to play with, we obviously want to kill one of these guys to reduce incoming damage. Seems good. Uh, it looks like Penumbra is still going to... Well, I mean, a lot of stuff's going to die this round. But look at that. Crystal Cloak is going to go down to 500 and... F or down to like 40 health after this. So she is distinctly dead. I like it a lot. There we go. Okay. Let's go, guys. You got this. Nom, nom, nom that Crystal Cloak. So, sadly, we didn't actually get to buff our... Okay, if this is what I think it is, it's going to be even more entertaining. Yeah, so the majority of the damage going to the Crystal Cloak here is coming straight from the Overgorger. Like, she ate through everybody else during her stealth period, and the Overgorger is just nomming her down. One more hit, and he would have eaten her entirely. So she's probably distinctly dead here. Oh, yeah. Bye. I think that might be the easiest victory I've had against the Crystal Cloak, to be honest. Wow, the Overgorger, though, guys. He didn't even get set up in his optimal setup there, and it was still really, really strong. Uh, so here we could honestly take the extra money. I don't think any of these are particularly amazing. The Feast thing isn't something that's super good. Crucible Extension is okay, but it's costly. I'm just going to take the money. I actually don't want any of those cards. Piercing deal 100 damage to friendly and enemy units. Wow, that's that's crazy, but also not something I necessarily want to take. Important work isn't bad. I'll take that. That's another reason that playing that imp was the right answer on that last round that I didn't do that on. Uh, so 20 health here will raise our pyre up to almost full, and we'll also get magic upgrades as well as some money. Here, though, we get concealed caves, which is really nice. We also get to upgrade a unit. Hmm. So if we look at our Overgorgers, they're already fully upgraded. We could upgrade our Morsel Maker. Honestly, I'm looking for anything that will let me replicate our Morsel Maker. That's, that's where I'm at right now. I need to replicate our Morsel Makers. Is there anything we want to throw away? Because that's a better question. If we wanted to throw away cards, then this is actually the better side. We're going to go here, though. I think getting that Pyre Health back is better. I think being able to upgrade our spells is fine here. Upgrade a spell to remove Consume. I mean, we all know what we're doing with the... What? What? Why is this not eligible to cost one less? Why is that not eligible to cost one less? Hmm? That's that's garbage. That's garbage. We were able to do it with other spells. I guess you can't make X spells cost one less. That's uh really, really garbage. Alright. Plus 20 magic power and consume. I mean that's not bad. Um, what else could we do that with? That's actually even better, because then you could cast it for zero and kill something. Of course, you'd only get to use it once. Although, honestly, we haven't seen it be that useful in... I mean, I still feel like this is just a way to go with it. Yeah, let's go with that. And then we'll upgrade a spell to cost one less. Uh, and with that, we'll go with Antumbra for sure. Or we could go Gem Trove to take that down to two. But I feel like Antumbra Assault is better because it just makes it a free spell. Uh, and then we can re-roll as well. Upgrade a spell to Permafrost. That means it will sit into sit in our hands until we no longer... Or until we use it, basically. Um, that's not a bad one for a lot of different things. Could be really good for this. Could also be really good for this, honestly. Just sit on this until the boss comes out and then do 120 damage to the boss? Seems like a good bet. I actually really like that. I think we'll do that. That seems like the best combination for that one. Uh, upgrade a spell with 10 damage. Seems great for Mind Collapse. And then reduce the spell's cost by 1. I think for that we're going to go for Gem Trove just to make that a little bit better of a card. And that burns through all of our magic upgrades there. Let's take some more coins. Uh, we could go through and purge a card from our deck if we wanted to, but I don't think that's necessary at this point. Oh, man. Okay. Alabaster Guardians have Spell Shield 5. Wow, that's annoying. Fell empowers units with armor. 
That's also annoying. This is the boss that I almost always wipe on, by the way. Fell the wings of the light, or fell the wings of the light. The clipped warriors has become winged once more, creating statues in her former image to block your assault. Okay. Honestly, I I have a pretty strong feeling that our overgorgers are gonna eat through these statues in like one hit. Yeah, it'll be one one hit plus. As long as there's another unit on table with the uh, overgorger, it's one hit plus plus. Okay, so we'll put the overgorger there because yeah, uh, we'll put this guy here. Go ahead and throw the rail beater behind him. We do have mind collapse now, which will do. 13 damage right now and give us back energy if it kills something. Seems good to me. I mean, we could actually target her, which it won't kill anything, but it would give 13 damage on the boss early. Uh, I'm not going to waste it on the statues because the statues have spell shields, so that just doesn't make sense. Here it does reduce damage, so I'll just do that. Uh, and then honestly, we could put a train steward there, but that seems kind of silly. It makes more sense to maybe put a train steward right here in the middle. Uh, and that's just because he can start working down on this statue and eat some damage while people are going through the middle. Alright, that thing is dead in one turn. Overgorger's just like, let me consume your statue, nom 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 nom. Oh, what? I thought Railbeater would knock that to the back, but that did not happen. Uh, so that's actually a problem. Okay, so now we have some options with Excavation Eruption here. Uh, we've also got some options with Fledgling Imp. I actually think putting Fledgling Imp here is the best decision we could make right now. Uh, and I think that putting Overgorger right here is a good idea as well. Now we're going to hold on to Excavation Eruption for the boss, like I was saying. But we will make some morsels here and then use those morsels to power up Overgorger even more. Uh, now, which Overgorger is the question? Probably this one, since he's on the last row, and we can basically guarantee that enemies are going to have to go through him. Plus, if he gorges one more time, he can one-hit those statues, like, on his own. Which is nice. Oh, yeah. This is fine. Okay, statues are gone. All the statues are gone. So much for that mechanic. Oh, that's annoying. That armor right there is pretty annoying. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the Morsel Maker right here. And then on that same floor, I think what we'll do... No, I mean, it doesn't even need to be that same floor. It could be this floor, too. Hmm. There's a lot of decisions to make this round that are not easy. Uh, I'll go ahead and give one more capacity to this bottom floor just because... One more capacity here seems all right as well. Uh, primarily because we could do that. Yeah, that seems pretty good. We'll kill the big guy there now, which is great. And then we'll put him right here. And that seems like pretty solid lineup. Okay. That's hilarious right there. They're like, yeah, 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 we hit you for like nothing, Overgorger. Please don't eat us. Overgorger consumes all. <laughs> so good, guys. So good. Overgorger's power is, like, undeniable. Also, this card existing is insane for the uh, the blue clan. I can't remember their name. Because with their spell damage thing or their spell weakness thing, this would be doing... What, it does, like, 160 right now with spell damage? It would be doing so much more. Okay, so now we have some really fun options here. First of all, dead. Uh, now let's see where we want to put these morsels at. Uh, honestly, I'll just put them right here. And then we have a two damage torch spell here that's not going to do a whole lot for anything. But we could gem trove here to give damage shield to these units. Which would actually prevent the overgorger from taking any damage whatsoever. I like that. Uh, and then if we really wanted to, we could go ahead and cast shroud spike here to consume something twice on overgorger. We do the same thing up here and make that one even bigger. But I'd rather spread out their power. Oh, that's not actually going to pump Gorger either. So we'll do this one. Uh, and this is the health. This is the attack. I'm going to go for the health one. All right. Two more permanent damage. Loving it. Absolutely loving it. Oh, Overgorger just... Hey, boss, what's up? My name is Overgorger. I eat things. Get wrecked. 
This is so good, guys. The Overgorger is so good. The Overgorger is like the angriest fat kid in history. It's great. He just, like, dominates everything. Okay. And I say that as a fat kid, mind you. Uh, let's see. So we could go for a vent here for zero to kill that back unit. I don't think that's a bad idea. Do we have any imps left? No, we don't. We could go Spike of the Hellhorned here. Wow. Spike of the Hellhorned here would be kind of silly, to be 100% honest. Like, this guy's already dead, though, so I don't know if that's even necessary. Um, I don't think a lot is necessary here, to be honest. Like, this would kill that, but so would this. Uh, I guess we could do this for 18 damage to both of these units. I don't know that that would actually do much, though, to be 100% honest. Huh. Yeah, this is, this is one of those interesting things. Eight armor here would basically prevent all the damage that he's going to take. I, I actually think that's not bad, too. Um... Is there anything we want to play before we basically cash out, though? I don't think so. We'll do that. We will do... That. Seems good. Seems very, very good. And when the boss comes down, we're still just sitting on Excavation Eruption. Like, in addition to having two Overgorgers just waiting to eat its soul, we also are sitting on Excavation Eruption. And it has the chance to come in days, too, because I don't think this says just... Yeah, it doesn't say non-boss enemies, so it can affect the boss, too. Uh, Mind Collapse will deal 22 to something. If it kills it, we get back two energy right now. On its own, it'll just do 10 base damage. Uh, this guy's at 40, so we're not killing him. We could kill this if we get up to 12, which means we'd have to save one mana for that to work. That being said, like we don't even have the ability to get down to one mana right now, I don't think. I think we're actually struggling to get down to one mana right now. Uh, yeah. That that seems like a legitimate thing. We are struggling to get to one mana, so... I guess do that, and then... Yeah, we'll just mind collapse this. Gain some more energy we can't use. It's fine, it's fine. I love that the Morsel Maker has like 10 damage, so he just manages to clean up hit for the uh, Overgorger now. Oh wow, Overgorger's so good. Overgorger is run MVP, guys. Absolute run MVP. Uh, that's not bad, but we don't really need that here. I mean, honestly, nowhere that we use Antumbra is going to be good right now because nothing is going to be that weak. So we'll go Morsel Maker there, or not Morsel Maker, but a Morsel Jeweler there. Uh, and then we could vent somewhere for some extra damage if we need it. I guess right here. But even then, like, we don't want to just out and out vent because it's not going to do much. I mean, now we could, but I'd rather do Shade Splitter to get another Morsel here and then put that morsel on a row where somebody doesn't have a morsel and needs it, like right there. And then we'll vent for what's left. Uh, we're still holding on, once again, to Excavation Eruption. And in the meantime, Gorger is just pounding on the boss every chance it gets. We're killing everything that gets anywhere near us, too. Like, nothing is moving, really. This guy's gonna make it up one floor, but he's gonna die immediately after that. So... Final wave. Here we go, guys. This is it. This is for all the marbles. Oh, my. Oh, oh my, guys. Uh, so we do have this right now, which is gorgeous. Just gorgeous. The space prism here. Uh, this only costs four, so we can basically play this and then have one left to shroud, spy, uh, shroud Spike here. Now, the question is, who do we want to Shroud Spike on? I mean, honestly, we can just do that. Uh, and we'll Shroud Spike, I guess, the one that's lower. So probably this one, but it'll be after we do Excavation Eruption on the boss. Have a nice 120 damage there. Uh, and then we'll do that. Weird. I know he got a Harvest bonus from it, but I don't know if we... Oh, it's minus one, so we basically did it for nothing. I see. Mistakes were made. Okay, well, we gave that guy a harvest bonus. He's probably still dead, so, like, it doesn't matter that much. Damage shield will prevent him from actually hurting Overgorger. 
Overgorger will still gain a bunch of attack power. Her multi-strike is just nuts, to be honest. Like, I, I had a really solid run, and she just ran through my entire train with that multi-strike. Because nothing had, like, enough health left to, to survive it by the time she got here. Like, even here, she's almost going to kill Overgorger in one go. Which is insane, if you really think about it. Like, as strong as he is, one go, she's going to basically almost kill him. Uh, let's do this. And then we'll throw a Morsel Maker behind him that gives damage shield. And another one that gives damage shield so we can stack some extra damage shields on our Overgorger here. Seems good. Like, she's going to break damage shield and probably kill the train guy right here. Oh, no, he has two damage shield. Okay. That worked out pretty perfect right there. Nom, nom, nom. Oh, it gave the damage shield to the wrong guy, though. That's okay. Oh, man. That was not as uh, cut and dry as I'd hoped it would be. Please tell me she's dead here. She's actually not dead here. This is the problem with her, by the way. She's not dead here. Somehow she survives all this. I don't know how. Uh, we don't actually have the room to play another unit. Oh, my gosh. This is ridiculous. This is why she ends up killing me all the time. Like, I think she's going to kill us right here. I don't think we actually have the ability to win. How? How? How did this even... Guys, how did we go from, like, the most dominant run ever to this? Like, it's insane, right? Okay. Well, there's nothing I can do about it now. Yep, we're dead. We're dead. It was such a good run, though, guys. It was such a good run. Fell cheats. She cheats. She's terrible. Fell is evil. And we're the ones from hell. Come on now. Making of a morsel. Add a morsel minor to your hand. Uh, shade Lamp. The first time each turn an enemy unit dies, add two morsels to hand. That's pretty good. Okay. Well. Still. We did pretty good with Umbra. We hit level 2 with Umbra. Uh, Overgorger is an absolute house. My god. That card is so, so strong. Still the only time I've actually completed the whole thing is with Awoken Stygian. Uh, anyways, folks. That's going to be it for this one. It was a great run. Thank you all for joining me. I've really, really got to catch up to my friends here who have reached Covenant rank 6, which I believe means that they've won six different victories, and here I am still stuck. We'll catch them next time, guys. We'll catch them next time. We'll just, we'll go harder on the Overgorgers. We'll find a way to make them even more OP because they were really, really good. Uh, all right, next time, next time. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. Bye!